Welcome to Exhibition, an Xbox podcast, episode number 61. My name is Samuel Adams, and today I am joined by a very special guest. I have Court Lalonde of Carpool Gaming, Xbox A, and so much more. We have a fantastic show lined up for you all today. But first and foremost, Court, thank you so much for taking the time out of your week on your Friday night uh, to join (laughs) me and to talk more about uh, Xbox and things that have been going on in the news. Of course, pretty significant news week with some Discord integration and stuff to talk about there. Um, But before we get into the meat of the show, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and the content that you've been making? Uh, So I... uh... I have a weird background. I, I started everything on my content creation side was doing uh, hockey content um, for the great state of Massachusetts. <laughs> Some people might not think that way, but uh, I was a big Boston Bruins fan and I was doing hockey content, but I ended up uh, my whole life. I've been playing video games and like, that's one of my, my passions. And one of the guys I was doing a show with um, was like, dude, I'd, we end up talking about video games. Like either the, the episode goes in and we'll like, meander and then somehow we're talking about video games throughout the whole thing he's like why don't we just do a video game podcast i'm like all right but like every there's so many video game podcasts out there so then we started this thing called three dads in a console where we weren't just talking about video games we were talking about from our perspective like for me like i can't finish games i'm as much as possible like i'm still haven't finished stray it's only like a five hour game and i just can't get it done i just don't have time so um and from there i i met matt and um we started Xbox A, and then from there, I met Sean Capri, and uh, next thing I noticed, um, we, the gamer cast, and you, me, and Capri got changed into Carpool Gaming, and I was part of the team and became head of social, um, one of the new hosts for the PlayStation Drive, and I, I make some appearances on the Xbox Drive from time to time, um, and it's just been a whirlwind. I've, I've been doing um, this stuff in the game industry for just over a year now. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird awesome. how... It's just weird to me. I don't know. I mean, it's weird, but it's awesome because I feel like so many people are like, you know, I feel like I've talked to so many podcasters that are like, I've been doing this for 15 years. I've been doing it for 10 years. And you're like, hey, man, I came out of the gate swinging. I've been doing all this stuff in a year, making some great headway with it. But the stuff that you make is great. I mean, I found you probably uh, about a year ago, uh, a little over a year. I, I kind of started. Well, actually, now it's coming up on two years, but I got more into the Xbox podcast world leading up into this generation where with the xbox series x was about to come out and so after launch i just kind of started digging into the community and i found you through uh sean capri you know who was just talking about an episode of xbox a that i think uh had come out and um and then just kind of took it from there. And so, yeah, you've been doing some amazing content and you've been uh, continuing to do some awesome stuff over with the team at carpool gaming so that's awesome to see my friend well thank you it's um like i said sean is um He's a he's an awesome guy and he he helps open doors and he all he does is lift up other people around him and I, I don't know man like I I I owe a lot to that guy and he he's he's a great person. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And and he's got some big celebrations coming up as well that I'm sure will yes, be uh, next plenty week. of publicity uh since this episode comes out on Sunday. It's the week of. So, if Sean happens to listen to the show, You've got something to look forward to with the. Well, uh, the- I'll, t- I'll I'll throw an ad in for Carpool Gaming. I I'm actually gonna I'm going to be in my car coming back from a cottage uh, when their show goes live on Wednesday, and I'm I'm, I'm going to miss the uh, 250 games given to one person. <laughs> uh, some exciting stuff, but hey, you know, there's no better way to uh to 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 dig into a podcast than on the road, so. I mean, you know, yeah, that that is the whole thing with carpool gaming. That is the uh, whole thing with carpool PlayStation gaming. drive. I, I even joke now, like uh, I said to Sean, I was like, well, I guess I'm going to be the only one in the car because <laughs> we it, well, Sean started everything in the car because he had no other choice. He was working on the road. But now everybody is working remotely the whole in the car thing. But the, the shtick stayed. So, yep, yep. the names. Yep, those names stick around indeed. Uh, But you mentioned a couple of seconds ago you were playing Stray, and so I thought we would just kind of kick off the show by digging into what we'd been playing recently. And, of course, you can uh, start off. So you've been playing some Stray. What else has been on the roster recently? Yeah, I've been playing a ton of Forza for the... Well, since since the DLC dropped, um, that Hot Wheels DLC, um, we were talking about it the other day on the Xbox Drive. I haven't played a game that's been this fun in a really long time. I, I do have an um, extreme obsession with MLB The Show, so I play that a ton. I play it on my PlayStation. I play it on my Xbox. Um, 
primarily actually I play it on Xbox, which is hilarious because it's a PlayStation first party game. But uh, I've been playing a lot of that. But I this Hot Wheel DLC, I can't put it back down. Like I, I can't like I play it and I'm in it and it just brings me back to being a kid. You've got your your magnetic tracks where all of a sudden the car is just going and then you can be inverted and you're upside down and you're going at super fast speeds. And then there's an ice track and then you're going through you're going in snow, then into a Rocky Mountains and then what we playground games has done with this game it's just unbelievably beautiful and we, i said it the other day like it makes me my anticipation for fable now is rising and rising to see even what they've done just with this dlc and what they've they've done with the whole world and the open world aspect of it and it gets me excited and that's a game right now where it kind of got killed by halo infinite and it's kind of a shame because I remember at the time uh, Forza Horizon was just building up and building up. And it was all anybody, else, all of us were talking about in the Xbox world. And Halo came out and we all got into it. And it was almost like we we liked Halo Infinite's story and then we didn't like it. And then we were hopping in the multiplayer and we liked it and then we didn't like it. And then we forgot that there was this game that was actually phenomenal and we just all put it to the side. For some reason, we wanted to spend more time on the negativity around Halo instead of the positivity that we only were saying positive things about Forza. So coming back to it now, playing it again, is just phenomenal. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think that your synopsis of what happened last year is pretty accurate. Um, and, and it's a DLC that I, you know, like you, I have the premium edition of the game. So the DLC is just waiting on my console. I did the update. Uh, it's something I'm digging into this weekend. But um, Forza is a very unique game. Um, and I'm talking about both Motorsport and Horizon, where uh, if you look at the PlayStation inverse of this, it would be like if they had kept Gran Turismo going in addition to Motorstorm, where it's like you have two of these very unique feels, um, but they're both racing games at their core. And so Forza Horizon has always been my preferred racing experience in the Xbox world, just because it doesn't take it quite so seriously. It's not quite a simulator. Uh, you know, like I can launch a Lamborghini off the top of a volcano, and that's exactly what I meant to do in the game. And to your point with the Hot Wheels stuff, I mean, I think this is, if I'm keeping track correctly, the third game, I think Forza Horizon 3, 4, and 5 all had Hot yep. Wheels expansions. Uh, and so... Some people might say, uh, another Hot Wheels expansion, but checking out how this one's done in comparison to those in Forza Horizon 4 and 3, I think there's enough unique content brought here that you can say, yeah, it's the same theme, but that fun factor is still present in the same way that it was in 3 and 4. And so I'm looking forward to digging into it more this weekend. And like you said, I mean, it is just a great time that adds uh, just a totally different, unique experience that really showcases what uh, Playground can do. And with Fable, I think one thing that's always stood out to me about Forza Horizon 5 is the amount of detail in the world. Um, now, when you slow down and you kind of, you know, crawl through some city streets, you'll see a couple of spots where some textures are lower than they might possibly could be. You'll see some signs that aren't as detailed because you're meant to be zooming through this world. Uh, but if you take the scale of the game and you kind of shrink that down and with that, you keep that same level of detail. So if they just pay more attention to a smaller area, I mean, Forza Horizon 5, as it stands today, is like the hallmark game of the generation and so i think the hot wheels expansion is just building on that um whole experience and yeah it is sad that the original launch did get a little bit overshadowed by the goliath of halo infinite for sure which is which is hilarious when you look back at it and we can i think we can all safely say that forza is the better game like it's just it's like a weird thing it's like halo is the the you know is the spokesperson for xbox but when we look at any race, as soon as Gran Turismo came out, all the comparisons were Forza, Forza, Forza. Anytime we're talking about uh, graphically how good a game can look, we're like, well, yeah, have you seen Forza on the Xbox? It's almost like that you have Astrobot. To me, you have Astrobot on the PlayStation that is just unbelievable fun, but it just looks great and it's awesome. And then you have Forza. Those are the two like, hey, if you're going to get a next gen console, if you get an Xbox, the first game I'd say, just play Forza Horizon. Just, just go out and play it. And you can see with all the bells and whistles and see what the game is, something's supposed to be beautiful. And then you got the PlayStation, like, just play Astrobot. It comes with the darn thing. And it's amazing, and it does all the next-gen stuff. So it's kind of funny that the two games, they get overshadowed on both consoles. 
And for me, I'm the only thing I'm playing on my Xbox besides MLB the show is is Forza right now. I I can't like I I finished his Dust Falls. Um, I thank you to the our friends over at Xbox Canada for providing a code. We got to finish it. Unfortunately, um, through the review, you don't you don't get the achievements, and I oh, have to actually go yeah. back to go get them again. So yeah, that ain't gonna happen. But I would yeah. recommend it to uh, anybody to play it. But I will say this about as Dust Falls. Um, Mature audiences only. And if you have a squeamish, like, honestly, don't play the game. Yeah, I started digging into it when it launched. I didn't get any kind of early review code or anything. But now that you say this, you did uh, bring back that memory of having review codes and not getting any achievements. So now I'm kind of glad that I uh, was not included in that group. But um, but I started it's playing kind of as- it's it's weird thing that bothers us. Eh? It's like, come on, man. Oh, I'm a big achievement guy. Like if I'm not That's unlocking fine. achievements, I've got to go back and get them if possible. Some of them I just look at and I, I think there's no way I value my time more than that. Um, but with As Dusk Falls, I am, I believe, uh, in chapter two, uh, if it's split up into chapters. Uh, and of course, so you've those, done the first credits rolled? Uh, yes. Yeah. I've gotten okay. to the point where the you, you have the first timeline and you see the options. Um, and now I'm in the next chunk after that. Uh, and so I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, it's a really good story. And I, I've described it on other shows as adult telltale. Yes, where it's perfect. a little bit it's like a it's like a graphic novel but it's grounded in reality in a way that I don't really think that I've seen a game um hit in recent years and so that's something that I'm excited for as somebody who loves um you know breaking bad as somebody who loves like these drama focused tv experiences this is something that's more appealing to me than like a telltale's walking dead or a batman game or something like that not to say there's anything wrong with those games in and of themselves. This is mm-hmm. just a different kind of experience. Um, so between As Dusk Falls and Forza Horizon 5's Hot Wheels stuff, that is certainly uh, what I'm playing this weekend. But, you know, we've been ragging on Halo Infinite. It's basically all I've been playing this week with this Alpha Pack thing that came out. So now I've finished that little event pass and I'm still, once again, same maps, same modes, basically. I I'm get still. It. I'm still hooked on it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what? All, all the power to you. Like I like I said, I'm I'm hooked on MLB the show and I still don't know why. Like I just yeah. like I'm in like I play the program every day. There's a new program that comes out, but there is new content. I think my biggest thing with Halo was I was so jazzed. I was so excited. I get into it and I get into the multiplayer and I play like 15 matches and I'm like. My little thing didn't move. Why are you moving? Oh, yep. I haven't done like three things with a pistol. Are you kidding me? Really? Yeah, it's, it's it's very unfortunate. And the worst thing is that you finish all of your challenges and you think, oh, thank God, that's over. And then you go back to your your board of challenges and there's the ultimate challenge. And mm. I was I wanted to go to bed after that 30th <laughs> game of the same map. Um, no, I, I think that the Halo community and not to spend too much time on the topic, but I think there's like this shared frustration and also appreciation. Like it's, it's a two tiered thing where there's a good game in there. I enjoy the, 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 the the gameplay is un unmatched. Yeah. That's what I like. Every time I play it, I have a good time, but I just want more of it and I want more of a variety within it. Um, and the progression system is getting an overhaul TBD on when we actually yeah, get sure. that. Yeah, and we're also yeah. getting max, new maps to be TBD. Yeah, I, I still say this. The game wasn't ready. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. But, I mean, when you've got the 20th anniversary branding, you have all of this merch. The game had already been delayed by a year. I get why they launched it at the point that it was at, because it was good enough to get out the door you had the solo campaign there. You had the multiplayer free to play launching early. Like that's a big win for the 20th anniversary that now they're paying for six months later. I still can't believe the the hype there was. So like once again, I, I was one of the lucky few to get an early copy of the game and we had to play it through the insider program. And so you don't get achievements, but we played a different build than what got released weeks later. Really? Yeah, so like what I played and what got released because like I finished it and then I was like, I want the achievements on this. Like I'm playing it again because I really enjoyed the campaign. So I'm like, all right, I'm playing it again. Like I enjoy the campaign. I have played a little bit of co-op. I've actually been enjoying my time with co-op. I just don't have enough people that want to play the co-op with me. So it's like, come on, man, because just no one I'm like, hey, anybody want to get back into Halo? Like, yeah, no. I'm like, ah, all right, fine, fair. All right. Uh, but I 
really enjoyed the campaign. And then when I finally had to play through it again, I'm like, huh, okay, that's different than what I did before. It's better, but like, what did they do in that those little couple weeks, or like, where where did that change come? And like, so for me, when I play the Halo campaign, and you know when you're like going down like a dark a dark hallway, and it goes to a door, and the door doesn't open, but you can see stuff on the other side. I'm like, so this game ain't finished. Okay, all right, I, I, I get it, I get it. For me, I wish it was launching like November of this year with mm. co-op with everything in it and, and i get when you have that marketing push you're already delayed it a year and you got all that money behind it you've got to release the game but like the co-op is good that you can play in the insider program and anybody can play this like it's not anybody right now if you sign up for xbox insider you can go out and play the co-op and try it yourself it it's fun and i think if some of these things were there um the lone wolf mode all these things were there and the x and the progression system was different for the multiplayer at launch I think we'll be talking about the game in a different light. And I think it would be more people like, oh, I can't stop playing. I can't stop playing. I can't stop playing. Yeah. And it sucks because I I like Halo. And I, like I said, I, I'm playing the co-op and I like it. It's just no, I have no one who wants to play. Yeah. That's, that's kind of where I'm at with it, where uh, the co-op stuff drops. And I look back on my time with the single player campaign and like I ran through Actually, I played through a big chunk of the campaign when it launched, got hooked on the multiplayer, then the holidays came and I got busy. And then I think I returned to it in like January or February to wrap up my first solo playthrough. Um, And after that, I went back and I did what some people do. I looked up an IGN guide. I started going and getting all the hidden cosmetics around the map and stuff. I got all the drops. Um, And so I've spent, you know, a considerable amount of time in this world. And now that co-op is out, there's no additional campaign content to go with it that I look at and I say, oh, this is great. It's just an offer for, hey, if you want to, you can go back and do this all again, but with a friend. And for right now, you can't earn achievements. I'm like, well, fair enough. Yeah, th- these are these aren't things that are really drawing me to it. Now, when it launches in full and and additional achievements come out because they are adding additional achievements to yeah. the game, that's when I might go back. And like if you want to squat up totally down to hop on the back of a warthog or hop in the passenger seat, um, and cruise around. But I think, you know, to your point, the game itself, we all agree, was not finished. And it would be better if it had launched a year because more maps would be there, more modes would yeah. be there. Um, y- you know, even just the fundamental stuff of like the conversations on Reddit about this alpha pack that came out this week, the animation that you see at the beginning of the alpha pack, it clearly looks like the DMR was meant to be added in this update. Because the DMR is something that has leaked. We've seen the the build of it in the game. It is coming soon. But it looks like they just subbed the DMR out for an assault rifle last minute and threw this out. And that's kind of the experience that we've had through the entirety of Halo Infinite's life so far. Yep. And I get the importance of work-life balance. I get the importance of making sure the team has time to process and stuff. But it seems like that work-life balance team processing portion of the plan was perhaps implemented a little too late to warrant a healthy development cycle where the players get the content they want and the team gets that solid work life. I think that, you know, an additional six months built into that work schedule uh, could have made a big impact there. But, you know, uh, this is the hand that we've been dealt. So I guess we've just got to play it. It's kind of the way that I see it. Yeah, no, I, I I couldn't agree more. It's a, and it's a darn shame because it's a really good game. And and what I'm hoping is obviously um someone's working on gears right now. Just just give it to us when it's totally finished. Like I am I am of the mind when a developer's like, I, I need more time, we're gonna delay it. Thank you. Thank you. Delay the game. Yeah. Delay the game. Like I'm playing an embargo game right now that is that is that I'm in shock how good it is for the, the the team that that's made it and I, I just I wonder when these big teams maybe it's just too many too many cooks in the kitchen I, I don't know sometimes it's just you know it uh, the direction doesn't go there like I'm not I'm not worried that we playground games is taking their time with fable and we haven't seen anything I'm I'm actually happy because like we saw what the trailer three years ago now the, the yeah. little snippet. So it's three years now. The consoles have been out for a year, a year and a half. Um, and it, the old life cycles for us, we would have saw something by now. And we're not. And I also love the fact that we you got machine games and all those other um, developers from Bethesda on the other side that we haven't seen anything from them either. 
Like we just, I was just at the Xbox event. We saw Redfall, um, which oddly enough, everybody was dunking on it. And then we all saw the gameplay and we're like, yeah, this game looks really good. I can't wait to play it. Like it looks great. And that's what I want more of. I want more of like, just take your time. Mm -hmm. Don't moan. No man. Like everybody should learn from what No Man's Sky did and turned it into one of the, probably the best games in the last 10 years. But it was a disastrous launch. Halo Infinite still has time to fix itself because it's Halo. We're, we're Xbox fans. We're, we're going to be there for it. But I'm giving them till like March. Mm, March. You fix, say. fix the game by March. That's a long time. Fix the game. Yeah. Just, I, just fix the game. I would agree with that. I think that my biggest, um, my biggest desire for Xbox is that when you look, and you compare because we all naturally compare whether people want to or not PlayStation and Xbox. They're yep. the, the, the time tested duo uh, that we all put head to head. And so what I want from Xbox is I want that same tier of game that I look at whenever I see a Last of Us Part 2 or a God of War come out, because those games, when I think about them, there isn't anything that Xbox has brought to match that. Now, I think that Hellblade 2 has the potential to be on that same level as God of War. Um, visually, story, it has the juice to make it happen. Um, but again, you know, that's kind of TBD not coming out in 2022, to my knowledge. Uh, no, probably I no, I don't I don't think it is. Yeah, no. And I, I mean, we got no news on that one during the showcase a couple of weeks ago. So that's a 2023 game, which again is fine. And I think Fable has the potential to do that as well, where you see this and you're like, this is a generation defining game. And that's what I want more of, because we're two years into this life cycle and I don't have any games aside from Forza Horizon 5 that stand out in my mind as this is the reason to buy an Xbox Series X and S right now. Yeah, like, of course, Psychonauts 2 was on everything and I, I still still am a huge fan of that game. But uh, I think you're you're bang on there. There only is the one game. Yeah, and I, and I mean, when you when you look at Forza Horizon 5, it's a great example of it, but visually, there's nothing that has blown my mind. Now, to your point, Psychonauts 2 is a great example of a game. I believe it came out, that was an Xbox One and PS4 game as well, if my memory serves yeah, correctly. No, yeah, it came out on everything. Yeah, so like when you've got these cross-generational games, that's one thing, and those are continuing to be great. I mean, I think about Red Dead 2 that launched well before the launch of this, this console generation, and it is in some ways better than the majority of games we get now uh visually i mean rockstar pulled some miracles with that one yeah just the opening scene of that game oh like the snow i have yeah. never seen snow like that in a game um and so it's those moments you know where here i am three or four years later talking about snow at the beginning of red dead redemption 2 i need xbox to pump out some content like that i think the gears 5 hive busters was a great showcase of how good yep. a gears, gears game five is look. gears five looks unbelievable gears five is up there with forza for me where it's like yep. when you look at a game it runs as smooth as butter visually it is stunning the resolution is wonderful the multiplayer is horrendous it's just got everything that you, well, <laughs> that you, <laughs> well I, I say this if you think about it it came at the end of the the life cycle of a console that was dead a year into its life cycle and it's almost like, hey, you knew you had this other thing. Just just wait. Let this. They really were banking. Like, they think about it. Could they just not held off seven months? No, nope, don't release Gears. Don't do it. Um, put it out day and date on 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 Xbox, on, on the Xbox Series X. But I guess they, we all know, we all got our Xbox Series X. Halo's on the, uh, Master Chief's on the box. They yep. thought that was the game. Yeah, I think that's what it really should. Now that you've said that, I had never thought about that before personally. But if you had had a world where on the back of the box, you have like a, a chiseled Marcus Phoenix, you know, like an old Marcus and you and you have that icon that, of course, not, you know, uh, as big as Master no, Chief. Not at all, but, but it, just a, a spectacle of the console itself. Yeah, like you, you boot up that game. It is something new. It's a fresh story. I mean, even if you didn't have Marcus on it and you put KDS, like you just throw that face up there. This is something that people will boot up this console and say, wow, that's what I'm talking about. And with Halo Infinite coming out, you have this icon on the back of the box and then you're like, oh, I can't wait to play that in 12 months. Um, yeah. so it was just a really unfortunate situation that I think that, you know, you're right. They should have delayed, 
uh, Gears 5 had they known, but it seems like that was a really, you know, in the grand scheme of things, a last minute decision to push Halo Infinite. But then you, the, we, we as Xbox people were all like, oh, we're getting this, we're getting that, we're getting this. And then you look at PlayStation, everybody's like, oh, they got nothing. This got Horizon. And yeah, like, yeah, I know. Like, people can say what they want about the $70 game that's coming out, and I don't want to get into that conversation, but it looks really good. Like, yeah. I know we've all played it, but there's also a generation that hasn't. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to play it. Looks really good. And then we also know like they got they got more coming. It's just like they got God of War and Last of Us. Xbox yeah. has got third party, but we still have the better service. Like Game Pass is still a better service than PlayStation Plus, but I would say this, the PlayStation Plus launched better in a better shape than Game Pass did in its initial launch. Like yeah. Game Pass's initial launch was oof. Oof. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like think a the, car accident. You've got to have time for the service yep. itself to prove itself and build itself up. Yep. So, I mean, when you think back to Netflix launching, they didn't have a suite of original content or third party content or stuff like that. And so Game Pass has grown exponentially through the years. Why, you uh, didn't like Ernest Saves Christmas? Come on. It's listen, I, I don't even know what that is from being oh, honest. Oh, wow. All yeah. Right. Yeah. I, but now Google back in the that. day, Netflix, I, I, I was I was pay, paying attention to Netflix during the DVD shipping day. So if you're talking about something that's come a long way, that's that's come a long way. Um, but with Game Pass and PlayStation Plus specifically, PlayStation Plus, I think people are giving it kind of a bad rap. Now, this is coming from someone who doesn't own a PS4, doesn't own a PS5. Um, and I don't really intend on buying one soon. I'm kind of waiting until mid generation updates come around Smart. for that one. Um but I would consider this an entirely new service with familiar branding. I mean, this is something that PlayStation, aside from the base tier, is building out as they go. You saw yep. 20 games get added this week, roughly 20 games, tons of Assassin's Creed games and stuff like that. A strong partnership with Ubisoft. Um, and so PlayStation is coming to the plate, coming up to bat, you know, for your, for your MLB The Show fans um, to finally, you know, Day bring on Game Pass. <laughs> i wish hopefully um it, no it is like that that, that game is oh, the I'm first sorry. party it is yeah. game 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 pass it's still hilarious to me it's yeah just, what, what what i thought in my mind i processed that is i hope that it comes out on playstation premium like their their membership well it didn't well. well that was the thing playstation plus had already launched and mlb the show launched on game Did pass it? and mlb the show was an eight so in canada you people are complaining in the u.s about 70 dollars games and us canadians up here um, up in the Great Wild North, we're like, yeah, games are ninety bucks up here, okay, oh. plus tax, ninety plus tax. That is so. Tough. A game is about one hundred and six dollars. Brand new so game out money. of the box, one hundred and six dollars. So you're talking about holding off. Like Ubisoft is a, a Canadian company. We out here, we just wait because we know Ubisoft games in like a month are going to go on sale. Like it's just it, it it's expensive out here. So like we pick and I pick and choose what game we're going to play. So to me, Game Pass and PlayStation Plus phenomenal services like i i i bought an xbox i i bought an xbox one uh was very disappointed and sold it i played um sunset overdrive one of my favorite games of last gen um and it was the only game i really played on xbox and then sold my xbox and that was it and that was out and then when they announced the bethesda deal as a huge wolfenstein and uh uh fan growing up uh because like i'm i'm 42 so like Quake, Wolfenstein, and all that. Those are like the OG games that like I originally got me into gaming. So um, when Xbox made that announcement, I, I turned to my brother. And I'm like, guess I'm getting back into Xbox. Like I'm not even thinking twice because I knew they were going to be on Game Pass. And then they started making more better deals and bringing out more better games. And I, I, it's my primary console now. I do have a PS5. Um, heck, I, I do a PlayStation podcast. Um, but I use PlayStation Plus. And for you to say that you're going to wait till mid-gen, you're going to be, and you didn't have a PlayStation 4, you're going to be like a kid in a candy store. You're going to get this PlayStation 5 slim, I guess it would be like a condo instead of a tower because um, <laughs> it's ginormous, right? Um, it's like, it's literally a monolith. Like you, we thought, remember we were all making fun of the Xbox Series X when they announced it and it was like this thing. You put oh, yeah. a PlayStation 5 beside it and you're like, what the, like, it's just like, excuse me? But yeah, you're going to have all these phenomenal first party games. They do have first party games. Their first party titles are um, something Xbox is obviously jealous of. But I still say this third party titles play way better on the Xbox Series X and, and look better. It's just these are just facts. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, if you look at the digital foundry stuff, nine times out of 10, unless a game is very well optimized for PlayStation 5 specifically, Xbox yeah. Series X just runs stuff better. And mm-hmm. not to the point where you're going to notice if you are not putting them side by side. Like if you got a PlayStation 5 and that's your primary console, you're having a good time either way. Yep. Um, but I've said it for a long time, just like everybody else has. The biggest reason to buy an Xbox is Game Pass, and you have to play games in a specific way to get the most bang for your buck. If you're if, if you're somebody who just has a gaming console to play Call of Duty and Madden every year, you don't need Game Pass. That is not what that's there for. What that's there for is for people like me. And I would presume the majority of people that listen to podcasts and then are engaged with communities, you're actively searching out new games to play. Like last week or a couple of weeks ago at this point, um, I saw a post that Children of Morta was leaving Game Pass on July 15th. And so I was like, oh, well, I might as well go ahead and give that a shot. I've heard good things. I dive in and within two weeks, I've put 25 hours into it. I locked down. I bought the complete edition of it before it left to get the 20 percent discount. And like it's one of my favorite games that I've played this year just because it was on Game Pass. I checked it out. It's a great time. And then I think about games like Paparazzi. That's like a little Pokemon Snap Dog picture game. Mm. And, I and, have and my, I have my thoughts on that one. It, that was like the one Xbox game. They were like, it's a kid's game. It's a kid's game. You know what my daughter said about this game? Game's trash. My daughter well, hated that game. But, you know why but everybody that, was playing that game? You'd like the achievements. Admit it. It was the achievements. True. The, but the achievements are there. But the thing is, would I have ever checked it out otherwise? No, no, absolutely not. No. not. And, and so I, it's one of the. Yeah, you're right. It, well, it's just one of those things where, like, as somebody who does a podcast and has converse, uh, conversations with people throughout the week, it's a great way to stay informed on recent releases, on these niche little games that might come out. Now you're seeing more Japanese content included in here, which I certainly. Uh, would Persona. never be checking out yeah Persona for example that's just not something that would be on my radar uh, and the fact that these games like Persona 3 Portable are getting ported and coming to Game Pass day and date That'll, those will sell consoles yeah that's a big deal and so these third party partnerships yeah Xbox's first party is still uh, at a state where it needs some time in the oven Yeah, but those games are coming we've got a fantastic game coming in favor we've got a fantastic new gears that will come inevitably and more coming from that team behind the sport forza and and redfall looks like i i i I truly like it the room when it got announced we were at the event and it went from like oh we all like oh redfall's coming up and that and that was all it's almost like the exact same thing that just happened with last of us um from now on any leak videos are gonna be like you're you're not real or you're just i don't care until the developer shows me anything like I don't care anymore because when we got shown it, I'm I'm sure you were watching it on TV and you're like, oh my God, this game looks good. Like it looks like a lot of fun. And that's going to be a game where the thing that I love the most about having it being in an Xbox this gen and and, um, Game Pass is when a game drops, I know if my friends on Xbox just be like, hey, do you want to play this game? It's not, hey, did you go buy this game? It's, hey, do you want to play this game? Mm -hmm. Because we all have it. Yeah, exactly. you know, like we all have it. It doesn't matter the day it drops. We all have it. Or it's, hey, if you pre just you, all you got to do is tell them to pre-download it because like that's the thing. And the app works so well for the Game Pass app. It's just like, hey, pick your games, throw them in. That's your library and you're good to go. And and I'm a Ubisoft fan. And I know I'm getting all the Ubisoft games on there now, too. And I'm just like, and I'm an EA fan. Like you said, for someone who only plays Madden and Call of Duty. Well, guess what? In in like two months. Yeah. Buy an Xbox. Just get Game Pass. Don't go out there and spend $90 each on each game. That's $180 Canadian. You could spend $160 for the year and have Game Pass and play all these other games plus those two bro shooters and the the football game you want to play. Like, yeah. You still get both those games and you get these other things. Like you were mentioning games you wouldn't play. Like I tried Artful Escape. And that ended up being one of my games of the year. Like I, I loved that game. That Very game was game. one of my favorite games in a long time. I'm a huge music guy and I just loved all the little, little the it, yeah. People are like, Oh, it's only Bob Dylan. I'm like, yeah, but then there's this part when the, they do a whole thing about Elvis Costello, like they each level. And then the one level is like pretty much a Pink Floyd level. And like, there's so many cool things they did in that game. And I was like, I never would have played it. And because of game pass, I did, and now I like those games. So mm-hmm. I, I 100% agree with you because when I was primarily PlayStation, if it, the indie game didn't come out on PlayStation Plus and it was one of those two games, I didn't touch it. 
But on Game Pass, I'm like, ah, I see a whole bunch of indies. I'm like, all right, I download. Look at what's happening right now with uh, Power Wash Simulator. Like, I I pretty much got forced today by a friend uh, friend of mine, Gamer Graham, to download that thing because he won't stop talking about it. I'm like, fine, I will download that onto my console. But everybody's loving this thing. There's been other simulator games, but Power Wash Simulator, the new hotness. Yeah. Yeah, and it's stuff like that where you get you get the big, huge AAA games. You get the weird little small niche games. You get the simulators. You get the razors. You get the card games and stuff like Slay the Spire, which is fantastic. Like there's just such a wide variety uh, that you can dig into. That for me, you know, like you said, uh, I did. I followed in your footsteps as well. Last generation, um, I had an Xbox One towards the beginning. Uh, and I played Halo 5, I played a little Sunset Overdrive, got into that. But primarily, I was playing on PlayStation 4 last generation, and I spent the majority of my time there. But I only played and bought the big games and those that were on PlayStation Plus. I'd missed out on a lot of the games that are on Game Pass now that are last generation indie games or or these double A games that just didn't really pique my interest or that, you know, when I look at it, is this worth $20, $25 as somebody who was in late high school, college? at the time i don't have that kind of money to throw down 20 dollars every week on new games but with game pass 15 bucks a month i mean i always say that's one huge trip to taco bell i can do that so i mean with the value proposition that it brings it's just in comparison to playstation right now it wins and for me even when people are trying to pull like a console warrior fanboy kind of thing and and put them head to head you can do that, but both of them have their benefits. I mean, you've got really good games on PlayStation. You've got a great service in Game Pass on Xbox. You've got solid hardware across the board. You can't go wrong. It just depends on where you want to go the most right. <laughs> if well, it's, it's, it, I agree with you. And it's also like for, for me, when I recommend like a friend of mine will be like, hey, I'm going to go back. I'm gonna, I want to get a console. What should I get? I pretty much always tell them to get the Xbox Series S. If they're not mm. big into games, I'm like right away. I'm like, get the Xbox Series S and get Game Pass. And especially because like I'm, I'm a parent and like so most of my friends, we all have kids. So like, well, what can I get? I just want to like, what can I get to make the, the kid wants a PlayStation? And nine times out of ten, I'm like, I wouldn't buy them a PlayStation. Like if, if you just want your kid to play Call of Duty and Fortnite, you're going to get annoyed. But I'm like, if you give them this other thing, they might try other games. And not only that, Xbox has done and just recently. And it's, it's funny at the very beginning of the Xbox Series X life cycle i was getting into game pass and figuring it out more and i'm like there's nothing here for kids i'm like you need to figure this out and i used to put out tweets and like tag them and uh, a company called outright games started talking to me and like we were doing it so we started highlighting their games well oddly enough those games are now always coming to game pass what was the biggest game on game pass last uh, two weeks ago peppa pig like that was and everybody was playing it it didn't matter but that game my daughter loves and everybody else the achievement hunters were like I'll play these outright games. And I'm sure you know the games we're talking about. You're like, you're, you're probably like sitting there you're like, I finished Paw Patrol. I finished uh, <laughs> Peppa Pig and I've got my 1,000 achievement points in like four hours. Thank you very much. Yeah. you can. You can literally get 1,000 achievement points in like very quickly in those games. But they have these, they have Super Lucky's Tale. They have all these games now finally where I can say to my friends, I'm like, yeah, just go buy Game Pass and then let your kid play whatever. And there's a family app where you can block certain games so when your kid logs on it doesn't matter they don't see them so you can choose what your kid plays you they still need to have a family plan uh, we know it's coming but like it still needs to be there but it's still the better choice for a family for a console and, and i always laugh when someone's like oh go buy a nintendo that's the family console I'm like yeah if you're rich um the console the games never lose their value they, they, they're very, very expensive and they, there's not as many varieties. So your kids are only playing like one, three or four titles a year of what's coming out on the console because let, let's be honest, the, the third party games just look better on other consoles. So, and your kids' friends are probably going to want to play with other people. And when you're on Nintendo, it's such a convoluted system to play multiplayer. It's just, it's a bit of a yikes. It's just so much easier to get into Xbox. And then nine times out of 10, when I tell my buddies to buy that console for the kids, they're like, Tech, two weeks later like hey so i've been playing video games again i'm like oh really yeah i didn't think that was gonna happen like yeah you could just see the progression coming and happening especially for my generation because in our early 20s is when the xbox 360 came out so for all of us at your age when we all first left our house and we moved out and we we're like moving in with our significant others um 
or on our own, regardless, we bought an Xbox 360 because that was the console we would play. So for you, it's Madden out in the US, but for us, it's NHL. So we'd be playing NHL before we went out to the bar. We were playing Call of Duty on it, and then Assassin's Creed came out. It was almost like, I, I say this a lot, it was we had the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo generation, and we got unbelievable creativity and unbelievable games from it. And then we had the GameCube and the N64, and it was just like, it was like losing its its luster. It was like, eh, like PlayStation 1, like it's fine. There was good games. But then the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 generation came out, and it like put it into high gear. We got Infamous, Bioshock, Assassin's Creed, uh, Uncharted, The Last of Us, like just title uh gears of war title after title after title of oh my goodness and so much happened so a lot of us played games but then we just we had kids and we just stopped playing video games unfortunately me i stayed a kid and i, I played video games the whole time but all my buddies are going back in i'm like here get this console get this and i'm only telling them to get an xbox even when they're like oh i want to buy a playstation i'm like i'd get an xbox i'm like it doesn't make any sense why i'm like what do you want it for and they're like oh i just want to play this one game I'm like dude just get game pass and then nine of them bunch of them they're all call of duty guys and then they're like oh my god i'm like hey guess what call of duty is now going to be on game pass and they're like what i'm like yeah so the thing you're subscribing to just keep subscribing the game will be there don't worry about it yeah that's the biggest win is just being so accessible for everybody no matter what level you're at like if you want the premium experience xbox series x highest tier of game pass you're good to go there if you want something and i think like you this is where the value lies is that if you are your standard regular person like these people that you're talking about here your friends that haven't really been into gaming but they're interested in dabbling again or they want to get one for their kids or something like that an xbox series s at 299 usd And I would probably say also like an expansion card if the time comes and you need one. Um, But that can be like a later investment. Um, But the Xbox Series S, super accessible Game Pass machine that is ready and waiting for you to plug into a TV. I wouldn't recommend it for like people that have not upgraded to 4K. But I mean, honestly, there are many, many, many families out there that have not upgraded to 4K and they don't have any intention to do so in the future. HDR does not matter. It you know, uh, 120 Hertz. They don't even know, you know, what realm that needs to be in. Like these are just regular. I I mean, I I would also agree as somebody who's looking at you on 144 Hertz monitor. Uh, Hey, I I just bought a 120 Hertz TV just so it would be above my my monitor so I could play because my monitor is only 60 and it just drives me nuts. Yeah, no, I mean, like it, it matters to the people that understand it and that care that much. But for people that are like, yeah, I want to play some Fortnite and I want to, you know, dig into, you know, whatever new game is hot right now. The Xbox Series S allows them to do that. And Mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, the game you want to play or a game you want to play that you might not even be aware of yet exists on Game Pass. And for $2.99, you can get in there. You don't need a high resolution television. You don't need anything else. You can play classics. You can dig back into Halo from 20 years ago. You can do whatever you want. It's a nostalgia machine. It's a modern gaming machine. It is just easy. And that's why uh, I have one, too, that I keep at my girlfriend's apartment. Uh, And when we move in together, I'm still going to keep it hooked up to a TV somewhere in another room because it's great. It's the best Um, value in gaming. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal. And, And that's why I think that, of course, availability is a big element here for why it's been selling so well in, you know, regions that aren't typically successful for Xbox. But also... People aren't returning them, you know, like you're you're getting some value out of it. And even if it's not your first choice going into it, if you're not, you know, informed or even if you are and you cave and you buy one, you're probably going to dig it coming out of the situation. Yeah, no, I I, I it's funny when the S got announced, I was like, oh, I, I, I straight up snobby gamer. I'm like, well, what's this garbage? Like, who, who needs this thing if it's not my biggest thing was like, well, it's not an Xbox Series X. It's like this a little bit better than an xbox one x like still hey xbox like if you're listening your naming of consoles is absolutely trash please stop stop just just figure it out these these names are terrible um <laughs> you don't you don't want the right X- now I'm like you don't want the oh. xbox 722 or, or oh, anything like what, what are they going to call like I, I make this joke every time what's the new one going to be called the, the xbox xl 
Or are you going to call it the triple X and like have these racy ads about it? Like, I don't, oh man, <laughs> terrible, I mean, terrible names. It, it is, it's an interesting naming. I see what they're doing where S is the entry level and X is like the premium experience. No, I, I get, I get, I, I get everything around it. Yeah. I just, I look at, um, I was given a question on, um, we were given it on the Xbox drive the other day. And they were asking um, if you could rebrand Xbox, what would you do? And I was like, I like new colors, and all that. I'm like, you know what? Everything is great about it, but their names. And I think Xbox needs to understand that the name Xbox itself is just like Apple. And what does Apple do? They just give it a new name, but whatever. We just call it the new iPhone. Mm -hmm. There is a number there, but they don't pump that number like it's nobody's business. It's not even on the box. The front of the box, it's just the phone. It's right, it says iPhone on the on the sides. The numbers on the on the sides here, but not on the top and the bottom. It just says iPhone. I was looking at the box. It was like they barely tell you what kind of iPhone it is. It just says iPhone. You know what the Xbox? Us Xbox, but we just know it's an Xbox. Do you call it a Series X? You just call it. It's just we just call it an Xbox. Mm -hmm. You can get away with that if you and you go to the store. I just want the newest Xbox. It's a lot easier than going. I want the Xbox Series X, I think, or is it the S that I want? Yeah. It's just yeah, weird. Like, or it'd be PlayStation does a good job of just going one, two, three, four, five. Like, it's just, I don't know, man. I, I hate the naming system behind it. It's my, it's my one gripe. Like, a, oh, it's like, I this think they're thing. getting to the point, though, with PlayStation where you're, you're getting up in numbers. For me, I think PlayStation 6 is where you're probably going to tap out on this naming system. Yeah, no, because, I get that. Because like PlayStation 7, I mean, in, in 20 years, are we going to be playing PlayStation 12? Like, that sounds strange. That, that sounds like one of those uh, emulation consoles that comes out from Retron, where it's like the Retron 15 and stuff like that, where it, it just doesn't work. And then I, I do agree that I think we can kick it back to where Xbox... You just have that's the name, and then maybe the design speaks for itself, or you yep. have some kind of model uh, number that is on the top of the box, and then, or even that's if it. you just said Xbox X and Xbox S, I think that streamlines it. Yeah, the, point the that series you thing was weird. Yeah, I, well, I think that they had a unique issue with this generation where you have the Xbox One X that already exists on the market. So these, you know, parents and grandparents that are going to the store, they're like, well, that's the same thing that they have now. And they're like, well, this one's a series. Like so they already had the really bad naming. So they were like, let's double down on it. Basically, people were so used to the bad naming, they just had to go for it. I don't know. It's um, just so weird. They do so many great things. Like I, I look at the Xbox marketing team and I'm, I applaud them. Yeah, They've they do really done... Well. They took a console where even myself as a gamer was like, I don't want to play this thing anymore. Like Xbox is dead. Like those words came out of my mouth. I'm like, Xbox is dead to the fact that I am primarily gaming on my Xbox console again. Yeah. They got me back. Like I Xbox 360 is to this day, my favorite console of all time is the Super Nintendo, but right up there is the Xbox 360 because there's so many great games and so many great memories behind a console that died on me three times i got yeah. i got a red ring of death poster behind me because i wear it with a with a with a badge i went through three consoles i went through two whites and one black all red ringed yeah still that didn't care all i did was wait for we we get um, what we called the coffin so they would send you this box and it was gray and they you'd put your xbox in it and then you'd ship it back to them and they would send you a new one that's how it worked. So everybody called it like, did you get your coffin yet? Like that was a thing. Did you get your coffin yet for your Xbox? Now I will say this. This is my, this Xbox Series X here. This is the third one. Wow. I have one downstairs, which is fine. But this is the third one that I've had of an Xbox Series X. And it's actually uh, messing up. I am not impressed with their, um, their return system. You have to find your own box to send it back really yes hmm yeah i haven't had any issues with mine i know that some people have experienced some issues here and there but that's um shocking to hear that after the red ring situation they wouldn't have some kind of um return system that was more uh you know optimized mm, you would think so like i've kept the box that it came in the last time and i just keep it in the closet just in case yeah. Yeah. No, I, I have gotten to the point where I, I don't throw away any boxes. And then if I have to find another cardboard box to put the box itself in, then, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But um, yeah, the red ring situation is is unique. And, you know, to your point, there are some 
faulty consoles now that will harm the reputation of uh, Xbox or any brand that deals with this. I mean, that's kind of the risk that you take. Whenever well, imagine you, that happened now. Imagine you know, like the red ring happened now. Like, imagine the red ring of death thing. There was no social media when that happened. Yeah. You you see what happens when something um, happens in the gaming industry. People, like, light it on fire. Imagine red ring happened now. Xbox would be done. Yeah. Instead, well, it was the total opposite when that happened. It was, also, where do I get another Xbox from? There's also not a, a justifiable catalog of games to the point that you're so excited about getting your Xbox back that you're blinded by the fact that you, your, your, hundred, uh, your, your hundreds of dollars is down the drain and your console is broken. You're just focused on getting back into the game. Like right now, I mean, you know, if my Xbox broke, God forbid, like I'd be disappointed, but this traditional player might be like, well, there wasn't anything to play anyway. Or somebody's Fair. playing like Horizon on PlayStation 5 and they have both consoles. They'll say, well, I'll just go over to this one. Forget about that thing. Um, I think that, you know, you're right in that there's, um, if red ring happened today, that'd be a bad situation. Um, but I know they've learned a lot of lessons from that. And of course they took a big hit. If you watch the documentary, which I'm sure you did since that's where the poster's from, but, um, you know, just financially, I think Microsoft learned a big lesson there, but, um, you they, know, they know the elite, also, that elite series too. They didn't learn nothing. Oh, so your elite broke down. So no, my consoles have broken down. I had three. Oh, elite you mean series. the controller? Oh, no, 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 okay. no. I mean my consoles. My oh. consoles broke down. Th- I had three separate uh, brand. I've a year and a half. This console's been out. This is my third Xbox Series X that's up here in yeah. my office. I had an Elite Series Two. I went through four of them, and that's then what gave I mean. Up. Yeah, no, I thought I've you had meant both. the Elite Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. No, no, no. Oh, no. My, my, um, my black elite Xbox 360. I had a red ring on that as well. Really, I had some, ba- yeah. You've had dude. some bad luck. Yeah. I've also had like I, I see your switch in the background. I'm like, listen, Joy Cons, we got an issue. But yeah. uh, I, I've had some. But I will say this: I have the Halo Edition Elite Series Two. That thing is a, a dream. Nothing wrong with it. Interesting. I've had yeah. zero issues. But Elite Series Two controller, the regular, I bought. I bought the first one. It didn't. It was clicky right away. Well, went back to Walmart, returned it. And also, I've been lucky. Like I've heard horror stories. People buy this thing and you can't return it. I buy mine at Walmart. I return it, return it, return it. And the last time, I was like, you know what? I'm done. Like the thing just doesn't work. I don't want it anymore. Yeah, I've been using the. Uh, I bought the 20th anniversary translucent controller. Uh, whenever that launched last year. Yeah, that. Yeah, that one with the green grips on it. It's a beauty. This is literally my go-to. Yeah, yeah, it, and it My feels good. Downstairs. Like there, there's a there's a premium feel to it because it has the rubber grips on the back of it, mm-hmm. and then just whenever I pick up a traditional Xbox controller now, it doesn't feel the same, and I always go for my 20th anniversary. Um, but yeah, that controller is fantastic, and I haven't had any issues with Xbox hardware so far. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it comes and goes. But I did want to transition in. I know we're getting a little long in the tooth uh, for your Friday evening here. Uh, but Discord on Xbox. Of course, we got the big news this week. The Discord is coming natively to Xbox. And it's kind of a roundabout way. You've got to get it to work. Not as bad as Nintendo's vo- uh, voice system. But effectively, you have to connect your Xbox account within the Discord app. And you accept calls or join chats through the phone app that you then click transfer to Xbox and it gets shot over to your console. But it's like a 30 second process at max. So what are your thoughts on Discord coming to Xbox and what impact do you think it's going to have on especially cross platform play as well? I think it's amazing. Um, as someone that uses Discord all the time, we we at Carpool Gaming, we even use it to record our podcasts. Um, we use it for everything. Um, I always found it frustrating when I was on Xbox and I'd have to turn my volume up and connect my computer just so I could connect to Discord and listen to the Discord chat. The fact that I can do this all, it's just thank you. It's it's odd to me. I'm more curious to the fact that it's on Xbox first before it's on PlayStation and Mm. PlayStation has like it. okay, but yes, it will be a little convoluted to get it working, but like I've already linked my account. So like if I'm on if you're if you see me on 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 Discord, you can see that I'm playing MLB The Show a lot. So for me, that little, do you want to accept the call on my Xbox? That's, I've already linked everything. So I'm, I'm you know, knowing's half the battle here. I'm G.I. Joe out here. So um, I think it's going to be a game changer. Um, Discord is so used, you don't even realize. Like my wife's company uses Discord and they don't, they don't even use it for video games. 
it is such a widely used app. I tried to convince my company to use it for our video calls because I can't stand using Microsoft Teams. I'm like, just get on Discord. Like, it's just so much better. Um, so I think it will make it just more easier to be on Xbox. Once again, it's Xbox going, hey, where's the thing that we need to make it easier to game here? Okay, let's go get that thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. And I think that for me, seeing this evolution of Discord coming to Xbox, the goal of Microsoft right now, from my perception, is for the console to fade into the background, the PC to fade into the background, the phone to fade into the background. You are just playing games, and how you play games is through Xbox. And so to blend the PC and console space together even more, Halo Infinite Co-op is the perfect example of you have a friend on PC that dives in, and you say, hey, do you want to party up? Co-op just drop. You can earn achievements now. Do you want to check it out? Then you get on console, you connect, yep. you connect through Discord. It's easy. It's a five second process. And I mean, I've done it before already where I'll hop on Halo Infinite and I've played with some streamers before and stuff like that. And it's a pain because I have to jump on my phone, like you said, or your computer or anything like that and just work through another third party device that I don't really need because my Xbox has the capability to do that. Um and so I think that bringing back Twitch integration, you know, being able to stream directly from Xbox again, uh, Discord integration, I think it's making it just a more open console to where you can make it do whatever you need it to do. Um, and it kind of tears down those, oh, you can't do that moments that I think that a lot of us have kind of gotten used to uh, with past hardware where there are just these limitations. I think that yep. cross play, cross progression, those getting taken out of the consideration are huge. Um, and of course, not every game has that, but that's kind of the expectation now that Battlefield, Call of Duty, Halo, these all have uh, that restriction taken off of it. And so having a communication device that's ready and waiting for you or a communication method uh, that's ready and waiting for you that has that same capability where there's no restriction at all. I think the next big step, like you alluded to, is getting PlayStation in on the mix, especially since they're a huge investor in Discord as a service uh, and as a company. Uh, I agree. It's kind of strange to see it come to uh, Xbox first, but maybe that just has to do with the PC like architecture and the ease of development for an app like that. Well, it's, I also see it as a better at making it safer for gamers. Like you don't have to go into those Call of Duty lobbies and have to listen to all that riffraff anymore. Um, you can just go in with your buddies and all connect. And and, and friends of ours, uh, Mr. Luke Lore, won't have any excuses anymore. He's going to have to jump in the Discord and chat. He can't just be like, I only can chat on Xbox. But I, I do see the the community aspect of it. So like any of our communities or your podcast community or like the carpool community can be like, hey, just go meet in Discord, go into there, and we don't have to worry who's – um if we can go against each other. Like Sean Capri does it on Saturday nights. He'll be playing Halo or – um, anything like that. I was about um, to say, does he play Halo anymore? I don't know. Well, it's no, been he's a while. been playing Fall Guys. He's <laughs> playing a bunch of different stuff. Yeah, so like w when we do uh, Carpro Gaming Nights um, on, on Saturdays, Sean will do everything through Discord. And that was the first time I was doing like community gaming even myself through Discord. And it it's fun. It's, it's, it's not like when you're playing online, even with your friends or you're that, cause you still have those people that can interrupt your lobby and interrupt your conversation unless you do a private chat or a private party. But with discord, you can have so many different people and you can be, when we were, there was one night we were playing halo and you were talking to people on the other team, like a guy kills you and you're like, Oh, you son of a, like, it's just, it's hilarious. So I think discord will just make it more fun to play games and that's one of the things that i wanted to do this year in video games i was like you know what i'm tired of always like oh i want to overanalyze a game i just, I just want to have fun playing video games mm -hmm. yeah that's a big one and i think that your point about discord communities it's big just because you know like with your um you know your wife's office everybody stays connected discord recently rebranded to to where they are more open it's not just a gaming thing um and so even with that rebrand it's still a gaming centric kind of reception within our community and so whether it's a twitch stream or a youtube channel or like you said a podcast community it's cool to be able to see people come together and it makes it easier for somebody to dive in whether they're just grabbing a phone and chatting or whether they're playing on an xbox or something like that it's just easy um, and i think that's one of the biggest things about this move is that hopefully with playstation potentially getting in on it in the future as well uh you can just kind of tear down those boundaries even more and just connect with people you want to have a good time with yes 
Yeah, it's a big thing. Uh, but that kind of wraps up the list that I wanted to go through with you today, the topics that I wanted to cover. And I appreciate, again, uh, you taking the time out of your week to join me and talk all things Xbox. And I, uh, I hope you enjoyed it as well. I had a great time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I would love to have, have you back, you know, later on in the fall as more of these big fall releases come out. Some of the third party stuff lands. Lots to discuss always. Uh, but before we round out today's show, where can the good people find you once again? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Court Lalonde, or you can find me uh, Wednesday nights at uh, Three Dads in the Console on YouTube. Uh, by a couple days a week on Xbox A on, on YouTube, or weekly on Carpool Gaming, either on um, as one of the hosts of the PlayStation Drive, and every now and then you can see me on the Xbox Drive. I also run the socials for Carpool Gaming, so if you tweet at Carpool Gaming, it's my smart mouth coming back at you. That is awesome. I know that I will certainly be tweeting more at Carpool Gaming. I've hit you guys up a couple of times in the past, so it's always a good show over there on Twitter and, of course, everywhere else you create content. It is a fantastic time. And, of course, for everybody joining us on today's episode of the show, thank you so much for tuning in. You can follow me at Jam Pack Sam on everything YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you want to find me. I'll probably be over there. But until next time, you guys have a fantastic rest of the week, and remember, keep on playing. 